Hello and welcome. This ECHO training program will cover the CS4910 and CS590 chainsaws. In this training program, we will cover personal protective equipment, fueling the saw, proper chain tension, review chainsaw starting components, as well as cold engine starting procedures, warm engine starting procedures, and flooded engine starting procedures. Okay, so let's get started. When operating a chainsaw, it's highly recommended to wear personal protective equipment. This equipment includes eye protection, gloves, safety toed boots, chainsaw chaps, properly fitting clothing, and on this chainsaw helmet system, hearing protection, a hard hat, and a face shield. Before you go to start your saw, you want to make sure that it's full of fuel as well as bar and chain oil. Before you go and handle those liquids though, be sure to put your safety glasses on. For fuel, be sure to use fresh 89 octane or higher gasoline contained in a quality sealed gas can. You want to mix with that gasoline at a 50 to 1 ratio with an air-cooled two-stroke oil that is raked as J-A-S-O-F-D. Echo Power Blend Gold oil meets those specifications, as well as Echo Red Armor oil. Also available is canned fuel. So this is Echo Red Armor fuel. It contains 93 octane fuel, already mixed to the correct proportions with Echo Red Armor oil. The fuel cap on this CS4910 is located here. To refill, unscrew the cap, carefully refill, re-secure the cap, making sure it's on tight, and wipe off any spills. On the other side, for bar and chain oil, you want to use an oil that's specifically designated for use with bars and chains, such as Echo Premium Bar and Chain Oil. You don't want to use regular engine oil. Again, on the CS4910, the bar oil tank cap is located here. Same thing, to refill, unscrew the cap, carefully refill. When you go to put the cap back on, make sure that it's secure and wipe off any spills. I showed you on this model, the CS4910, where the fuel tank cap is located, as well as the bar and chain oil cap. On the CS590, those caps are in the exact same location. Also before starting your saw, you want to make sure that it has proper chain tension. And before you work with the bar or chain, be sure to put your gloves on. A loose chain will not cut straight. It has the opportunity to derail off of the bar, as well as it will lead to premature wear of your bar and your chain. To make sure you have proper tension, there's two checks you should do. First is, in the middle of your bar, pinch the chain slightly and pull up. The driver should just clear the bar track and when you let go of the chain, the chain should return to the bar. The second check is to see if the chain is binding. You want to use your, the shaft of your chainsaw tool to do that. So pull back the chain brake to deactivate it using the shaft of your chainsaw tool and advance the chain. If you found that your chain is loose, too tight, or is binding, follow the chain tensioning instructions found in your owner's manual. Also before you go to start your saw, another good thing is to familiarize yourself with some of the components of your chainsaw. This is the chain brake handle. You push it forward to lock it in place or engage it. With it locked forward, the chain won't move. To disengage it, you pull the chain brake back. The chain will now move. This is your bar scabbard. Whether you're transporting the saw or storing it, it's always good to have your bar scabbard installed because it covers the sharp cutting teeth. Before you go to start the saw though, 
be sure to completely remove your bar scabbard. Moving to the rear of the saw, this is your on-off switch. When the switch is down, it's in the off or stop position. When you go to start the saw, move the switch up. Now it's in the on or run position. This is your rear handle, and inside of it is your throttle trigger. Squeeze the trigger, the chain will move. This area right here is where you will put your foot when you go to start the saw. Switching over to the other side, this is your choke lever. So we need to pull the choke out when we're cold starting a saw. To choke the engine, pull the lever all the way out. When you're ready to run, push the lever back in. It's now in the run position. You may have heard when I pulled the choke lever out, it made a slight click. What this slight click is, is called fast idle. So if this is normal idle, fast idle is just bumped up a bit over idle. And what fast idle does is it helps start cold engines as well as help start flooded engines. To disengage this fast idle, click the trigger once. So pull it out, push it back in, same thing. Click the trigger once, it takes it from fast idle back to normal idle. Moving on, this is your decompression valve. Press the decompression valve in when you're going to pull the rope. What the decompression valve does is it makes pulling the rope easier. Once the saw fires or starts, the decompression valve will reset itself. One thing though is while this is a convenience, pressing the decompression valve is not required to start the saw. Going back to the other side, this is your starter rope handle. When you go to pull it, you want to pull it briskly, but carefully guide it back to the saw. Don't just let it go and snap back. A cold engine is a saw that hasn't been started for some time or is cool to the touch. The cold engine starting procedure for the CS4910 is the same as on the CS590. To perform a cold engine starting procedure, first move the chain brake forward to the on position. Next, remove your bar scabbard. Place it aside. Towards the rear handle of the saw, move the on-off switch up to the run position. Pull the choke lever all the way out. Press the decompression valve all the way in. Place the saw firmly on the ground with nothing touching the bar. When you go to pull the rope, what you're listening for is that for it to fire and die or false start on choke. If you don't hear it fire and die, stop after pulling the rope five times. Once you hear it fire and die, or you've pulled the rope five times on choke, stop and push the choke lever back in. Go back and keep pulling the rope again until the saw starts. Once the saw starts, remember that the fast idle is still on. What you wanna do as soon as it starts Click the throttle trigger once, and it'll return it from fast idle down to normal idle. Not doing so could damage the saw. Chain brake on. Scabbard off. On off switch up to on. Choke lever all the way out. Press the decompression valve firmly on the ground, nothing by the bar. Your right foot through the rear handle, firmly grasp with your left hand on the loop handle, and pull, listening for the false start. 
There it is right there. Ear protection, face protection. Push the choke back in. Pull till it starts. Immediately click the throttle to take the fast idle off the normal idle. Deactivate the chain brake. Chain brake back on. Turn off. Chain brake on, bar scabbard off, on off switch, up to run, pull the choke all the way out, clicking also setting the fast idle, press the decompression valve, right foot and rear handle, left hand firm the grasp in the loop handle, and pull until you hear it fire or die. Right there, that was a fast false start. Earmuffs, face shield, choke in. Continue pulling until the saw starts. Immediately squeeze the throttle to take it off a of fast idle. Pull the chain brake back. Switch off. A warm engine is a saw that's been run recently or still is warm to the touch. The warm end starting procedure for the CS4910 is the same for the CS590. So, to perform a warm engine starting procedure, much like before, first, Move the chain brake forward in the lock position. Next, remove your bar scabbard. Moving to the rear handle of the saw, move the on-off switch up to the run position. Now one thing we're not going to do is pull the choke out. Warm engines don't need to be choked. From there, press the decompression valve in, place the saw firmly on the ground, without anything touching the bar, and pull the rope until the saw starts. The saw should start generally within five pulls. If it doesn't start after five pulls, the engine is probably cooled down more than you thought. Stop and go back and repeat the cold starting procedure. Chain brake on, bar scabbard off, on off switch up to on, don't pull the choke out, press in the decompression valve, earmuffs, face shield, right foot and the rear handle, left hand firmly grasp the loop handle, and pull until it starts. Pull back the chain brake. Chain brake on. Switch off. Chain brake on. Bar scabbard off. On off switch up to on. Don't pull the choke out. Press the decompression valve. Earmuffs, fail shield, right foot, rear handle, left hand from the grass of loop handle. Pull the saw as many times until it starts. Chain brake off. Brake on, turn off. If you've used one of the two aforementioned starting procedures and your saw still will not start, check two things.
first, check that there's fuel in your tank. If there's fuel in your tank, it may be flooded. Signs that your saw may be flooded are around the muffler you see wetness or you can smell unburnt gasoline. If you see that, there's a good chance your saw is flooded. So a flooded engine starting procedure is move the chain brake forward, locking it in if you haven't done so already. Additionally, I'm going to assume you have your bar scabbard off because you were trying to start the saw. From there, move to the rear of the saw, move the on-off switch up to the run position. We're going to do something different with the choke lever. Pull it all the way out till it clicks. As we know, that click is going from normal idle to fast idle. So now we have fast idle. Push the choke lever back into the run position. It's still locked in the fast idle position though. Press in the decompression valve. Place the saw firmly on the ground with nothing by the bar. And what you want to do is pull the rope as many times until the saw starts. Now this may be 10 to 15 pulls before the saw starts. When it does start, we have to remember the fast idle is still on. The chain is going to want to move and the chain brake is locked. So what you want to do, as soon as the saw starts, click the throttle once. That'll take it from fast idle back down to normal idle. Once the saw does start, you'll see a little bit more smoke. That's normal. That's it clearing the unburnt fuel out and deflooding itself. Chain brake on. Bar's already off because I was trying to start it. On off switch up to on. Pull the choke lever all the way out. Also setting the fast idle. Push the choke lever back in. Press the decompression valve. Place firmly on the ground. Nothing touching the bar. Earmuffs, face shield, right foot and the rear hand. Left hand. I'm grasping the loop handle and pull as many times until the saw starts. Immediately click the throttle to oh. take it from fast idle to normal idle. Pull back the chain brake. Oh. Brake on, switch off. A little extra smoke is normal as it clears out the flood. Chain brake on. I'm assuming you have the scabbard off because you were trying to start the saw. Ignition switch up to on. Pull the choke lever out, setting the fast idle. Push it back in so it stays on fast idle. Press the decompression valve in. Earmuffs, face shield, right foot in the rear handle, left hand firmly grasp the loop handle. Pull the rope as many times until the saw starts. Click the throttle trigger once to take it from fast idle to normal idle. Pull back the chain brake. Brake on, turn off. A little extra smoke and the exhaust is normal. That's it just clearing the flood out. This concludes this training video. We hope that it helps you operate your chainsaw. On behalf of everyone at Echo Incorporated, thank you for your time and your business.